Hello, Robbie. I wanted to address your email like face to face here because I think it'll be easier for you to understand. And then we'll dive deeper into it so we can find the right solution for you. So I've been in the CSG Academy since January and I've gained a lot of knowledge and I can use the progress to call talk pathway. Thank you for telling me that. It makes me very happy. We work very hard. Obviously, I notice all your messages. I read through them. We're responding to you, you know, 20, almost 24-7. We're always there, uh, but yes, you have a question. However, recently I've been a little stuck with what to do in the future terms of college soccer. Throughout my time in CSG Academy, I've still been confused with the mass email format. So it, thank you for telling me this. When you say throughout your time, unless you tell us you're confused, we can't help you. So if you've been confused for many, for a long time, please let us know earlier so we can address it. At the end of the email, I say, I'm interested in learning more about you and your program. Below, I've attached my video. With your permission, I may attend your upcoming ID camp. To me, this does not make sense as every single school I will send this to will not respond or they will say yes. So great question. A lot of the recruiting process is about getting genuine interest. In the college recruiting process, college coaches, frankly, to be upfront with you, don't make a lot of money. So if you say to them, I'm willing to come to your ID camp or may have permission to come, what we're saying to them is, I want to come to your ID camp. I'm willing to pay you money. I want you to look at my video. Now, in a perfect world, you would just say, coach, I've attached my highlight video below. Could you please let me know what you think of it? If you like it, I will come to your ID camp. But they don't respond to that. And to your point, they either respond with don't respond at all or they will say yes. If they say yes, the question is how they say yes. And I've been working with you and I'm seeing your stuff. Sometimes they say we really like your content. Sometimes they say, please come because we want to see more of you. You know, in your perspective, you've gotten not just the word yes, you've gotten genuine interest. And so that's why we have to phrase the question that way. I wish the recruiting process was clearer and to your point made more sense, meaning you could just say, here's my highlight video. Do you like what you see? And would you like to come? Now you made another additional point here, but since we're in Canada, it's difficult to make that trip. So when we work with students, we are very, we try to be very clear. And if we haven't been clear, I apologize. You will have to go to ID camps, especially if you're from Canada. Therefore, do I say this regardless of my interest level or my likelihood of actually being able to attend? So to answer this question, it depends on how they respond. So if they responded to you saying, yes, come to the camp, then you don't have to necessarily go because they didn't show a lot of interest. If they respond with, we really liked your video. We want to see more of you. We need your position. Then you should probably go for sure. Now I can tell you this, if you want any chance of playing college soccer and pro soccer, which I know you talk about later in your email, you have to go to ID camps. There's non-negotiable. You're from Canada. The league that you're playing in is not known here in the United States as much as it should be. And unless you want to play, if you want to play pro soccer through the methods I want to show you, which is through college soccer, you have to go to camp. If you don't go to camps, you will not play college soccer. And if you say, well, I want to use a different strategy to do so, then at this time, you know, our methodologies don't fit. You have to go to ID camp. That is a non-negotiable. I've been very confused on the topic. I need some clear uh, advice and direction. So thank you. I hope that was clear. Again, if you're ever confused, if you've been confused for a long time, you know, you're an adult, Mr. Robbie. We've worked with you guys for a long time. Tell us, you know, that way I can explain exactly what I've explained here to you. And I've expressed for Angelo to explain that to you as well. Because I know recently he talked about going to England and some other things. So we knew this was something of an issue. Now you said here, taking into this consideration, I was always, I always get the thought of how does this help me go professional? This is my main goal since my start with the CSG Academy. What with that would going into a smaller D1, D2 school increase my chances rather than trialing abroad? So good question. My expertise and my opinion, which is an opinion, is that unless you have a European passport, playing abroad is not realistic. I played abroad myself. I played in Sweden. I played in England for Fulham's Youth Academy. In fact, Fulham is the reason I think this method doesn't work if you go abroad without a European passport, because I went there without a European passport. And the moment I arrived, no matter how good I was, they said, unless you get adopted, get married, or play for the national team, you're not going to be able to sign for us. So I played pro soccer because of college. So would it be better if you played college soccer for UCLA, Stanford to go pro? Absolutely. But I didn't play at any of those schools and you're not going to be recruited by any of those schools just like I wasn't recruited by any of those schools. So because of that, if you want to play pro soccer, the only method I know how to help you with is if you play D1, D2. Now, Angelo talked to you about some opportunities to go abroad and they will talk to you about going pro. Angelo shared those with you per my recommendation because you asked. But I'm telling you now, unless you have a European passport, I think those are a waste of time. And even if they are a great experience, I don't think they're good for the fact that, you know, in our academy, we take education first and foremost, not going pro. We prioritize your education. And secondly, is if during this process you want to play abroad and you do go to one of those things, teams in England, they're going to send you to the fourth, fifth, sixth division. 
and you know maybe one day you could go pro where on the flip side if you go play college soccer in the summertime you get to qualify for something called usl2 all the usl2 teams are playing against professional teams or affiliated with a professional team and that is how i went and played pro is i played really well in usl2 because of college soccer i then did not get drafted went on many open trials but because of playing at a small d1 school which is where i played they believed in my reputation gave me trials eventually i tried with two mls teams didn't make it but it did eventually make a usl team and then having made the usl team i then went on to play at toronto in mls where i was eventually cut but i got to play pro and that led to my contract in sweden because then i no longer need a european passport because i was deemed a professional soccer player so they gave me a work permit so from my perspective the only way i can help you go pro is if you go to college in the united states that is the only way i can help you now trialing abroad is a great opportunity if you have a european passport you can go to the slower division through a different connection we cannot help you trial abroad we will not help you on the professional front unless you go through college and the way we would help you is step number one is college soccer once you get into a college soccer team, then I would talk to you about what's it look like to play USL 2. Once you're playing USL 2, you need an internship because even if you go pro, Mr. Robbie, and I'm telling this for your father as well, your first contract is going to be, and Angelo is a pro soccer player right now who's speaking to regularly, he makes $900 a month. Okay, it is not enough money to survive. So you have to get an education, in my opinion, of course. Or you say, look, I'm going to have a wonderful experience abroad and I'm going to go pay for or live in one of those companies. And I'm saying to myself, this is a great experience. Maybe I'll get to trial, but no matter what, I get this amazing experience abroad, getting to play in a professional environment in a stadium. But it's an experience. If you're going to go, that's going to help me go pro. I don't believe in those companies because one, I was pitched it when I was your age and I don't, they don't prioritize education, which is important to me. And then two, unless you have a European passport, it doesn't work. Now, if you turn around and maybe I don't know this about you, you go, yes, we have a European passport. It's a French passport or a Belgian passport or whatever. Um, if it's a British passport, frankly, that only will work in Britain. It will no longer work in other European countries because of the Brexit. So, and pretty soon, well, you're Canadian, so it doesn't affect you. In the US, they're going to make it so you have to have a visa to go to Europe pretty soon. Anyways, the point is that if you do have a European passport, then what you need to do is contact people within your community that are connected to teams abroad, and then you could go trial abroad as a French passport because that's different. Uh, okay, then my highlight video is being majorly updated. I have much better clips from this preseason and half a season I have already played. Jordan said, I'm okay to use clips from a year and a half ago if they were really good goals. However, that does not make sense to me as I was so much younger playing against so much young competition. Should I include clips from my preseason and my regular season that I just played? Good question. So Jordan is correct. College coaches, as much as you think they can tell if you're younger or not younger, it's hard for them to tell through video. The best clips are the best. So for example, my highlight video is full with JV soccer because I have the best clips from JV soccer when I was playing high school. In addition, I mix it in with club soccer. So to answer your question, if you have better clips than you have now, you're more than welcome to add them to your video, but that is not the main purpose. Coaches don't want to see any update on your already video that they've already potentially seen. What you should do though, is you should take, which we've discussed and we've made this messages in the group is you need to create every touch videos and a full game timestamp video of this new improved playing. So instead of updating your current video, which you're more than welcome to also do, you need to make a new highlight video that doesn't have to be as long. It's more of a two to four minute video, maybe even a one minute video where you're updating coaches. Hi coaches, wanted to update you. I played, I played really well in this game. Here you go. Now, because you're from Canada, you're going to have a very difficult time. No matter how much video you send, you have to go to ID camps. If you don't go to ID camps, it will not work. One of the things we strongly encourage you to do early on is create a list of NAI schools because of scholarship. International players are much more accepting by NAI schools, and we put that on your list. So the answer to your question is, yes, you can update your highlight video if it's better than the clips already there. That's number one. And if you're not sure, we will help you with that. Go ahead and edit the video and we will tell you whether we want it to be different based off of what you submit to us. That's number one. Number two is if you um, plan to make another video, which I hope you do with this better competition, please make a new video, call it an every touch video or a highlight video of the spring. And to be completely transparent with you, coaches don't want any more highlight videos. Once they've seen one highlight video or you've submitted one highlight video to them, even if they haven't watched it, they don't want to see it updated. They don't want to see any clips that they've already seen again ever. They want a new video. So give them, say, coach, this is an update. We played against so-and-so. I had a great game here. I thought I had a solid game. Here is an updated video and give us totally new clips. So that I think should answer this question. Then 
Last week, my dad sat down with you over Zoom to discuss the CSG Academy back then. My father asked the question, how long should I be in the program? We believe we responded with three to six months. It has now been eight months, and I feel stuck and confused. What would you recommend best for right now? So good question, Robbie. So if you're feeling stuck and that you've mentioned at the beginning that this has been really helpful, but that you're feeling stuck, then at this time, maybe we should part ways. We've helped you as much as we can up to this point, and we should part ways, which would be very reasonable. If you go, look, this has been really helpful, like today's little video, that's been really helpful. It's really cleared things up. You know, if you what we do, we're an education service. We're here to guide you through the recruiting process. You come to the meetings, you ask us questions, we tell you what to do proactively, and then we help answer your questions through this process. Your biggest dilemma that I see, having looked through all your documents and all your Discord stuff, is you have to go to college ID camps if you want to play college soccer. And if you want to go pro using our method, you're going to have to play college soccer. So the big factor here is which schools do you need to prioritize? We need you to get interest from the Division 3s, Division 2s, then Division 1s, and you have to go to their ID camps. If you say, Zev, I don't want to go to ID camps. It's too far. It's too expensive. Then at that point, our method won't work to the degree we want it to. Also, we have to be open-minded to the NAIA schools. So that is the main message is where, Robbie, it's up to you. We, you know what we provide. If you go, we want more help, we are here to help you. If you go, you know what, you've helped us so much, but at this point, we're going to take it into our own hands. We've learned so much. Thank you. That's what we are. We're an education service, and we have been educating you for eight months, and you've improved so much along the way and gotten interest. But the big thing is you must be seen in front of these coaches. I'll copy your father on this email as well because we want you guys to be involved. And, you know, if there's any other questions, we want them answered because we want to help you in the right direction. Okay, I'll talk to you all very soon. Bobby, before I have you go, actually, there's one other thing. So we're I'm looking here at your Discord. Uh, you've asked some very good questions throughout this process. Like this was just uh, two days ago, which we'll respond to this. The answer is yes, uh, just by the way. The answer is yes to this. And you've submitted some videos, and we're getting back to you about how. And we're constantly here helping you, which is awesome. And your questions are great. That You've done a very good job being very proactive, asking us what we can do with. We talked about international opportunities, which, again, is not our expertise. But we do want to help you no matter what because – Obviously, we care about you. So the big thing, takeaway from this, as we're trying to help you, we talked about Riasa, we talked about Senai to UI, and Angelo said he was going to help you, which is outside of our jurisdiction. I allowed Angelo to do that, but that's not something we do for any other students because we only focus on college soccer. But Angelo has experience in this, so I let him go outside of our realm to help you because that's what we want. So in saying this, the big thing is you've done a great job here, and we've helped you you know, every step of the way with all your questions and how to email schools. We have to get seen by them in person. If you don't get seen by them in person, you will not be getting recruited. So the big question for you is what would you like to do given that knowledge and where do you see the steps? There will be some camps in the fall that you will have to go to. Um, and the question is then we want to focus on which of those schools. Um, we did have one other student that – is from Canada and decided to go play in Canada. It is not something that we're an expert in. They had offers to play in the United States, but in the end, they wanted to stay in Canada. It is, does the, the opportunity does exist. We are not experts in that, so I can't tell you exactly how that would work, but I'd be happy to connect you to that student so you could see how and where they're playing college soccer. Um, I think you probably have more ability than he does, but again, that's uh, subjective. And the big thing is You've done a really good job contacting these schools, but they have to see you in person many times over. And because you're from Canada, the only way really to do that is many videos as you're doing with your Instagram, et cetera, and camps. So let me know what you think about this video and uh, we can go from there.